I, um, I personally, really quick, I just want to show honor where honor is due. And I just want to thank my grandfather, um, the father of this church, um, for everything he's done for my life. Um, growing up, I called him dad. I called my grandma mom. Um, and there's, rare, there's rarely a time where you see grandpa not on his table reading his word. And um, so, Grandpa, I just want to thank you so much for being so consistent in your walk with God and being such an example of what it looks like not to turn back to your old life, but to continue to walk. And uh, he's a spiritual father to many. Anybody in here ever been impacted by uh, Pastor Mondo today? He's been there for so many people. Let's give him some honor today. And to my, uh, to my pops, Dad, I love you. Happy Father's Day. Um, I'm so grateful for the sacrifice that my dad has made for me and my siblings and my mom. Um, really, my dad is the hardest worker I've ever met in my life. Nobody works harder than him. I see all my brothers and sisters are like, yep, nobody works harder than my dad. And um, I was thinking about him this week, and one of the greatest gifts he could have given me was serving the Lord. And uh, my dad, when, uh, when I was younger, uh, in my teens, he was, uh, he was a youth pastor and that was one of the greatest gifts he could have given me. Um, and he was such a hard, he would work, he would youth pastor, he was a husband, he was a father. And, and it was hard. And I remember there was a, a time um, in his ministry that God had given him where he was like, you know what, I, I think I'm going to lay down youth pastoring for a while. And I begged him, I said, Dad, please don't. This is the greatest gift you could have given me. And he kept going and he kept going. And so, Dad, I want to thank you for that. Um, for all his lessons that he's given me. Anybody in here um, ever been a child and you hate your dad saying something and then you grow up and then you say it to your kids? Uh, I, I do that all the time now. And my dad always told me, uh, like, limits. I hated that word limits. He was always saying, you got to have limits in your life, Josh. And now I find myself telling my children that. Um, and it's such an honor, such an honor to be up here on Father's Day um, preaching to y'all a word that God has given me. There really is no greater gift um, in this world than one, being a husband to my wife, but two, um, being the father to my children. I have four beautiful children. Zion, right here in the front row, um, he's watching me today. I love him so much. That's my baby right there. Uh, he is so, so awesome. He has the greatest heart. Um, and for Beckham um, as well, he's right here. He's my little shy guy. Um, but I love him so much. And to Cash, where is that guy? He needs to get saved and he needs Jesus. There he is right there. There he is, church. Pray for him, please. Um, no, but he's so adventurous and so awesome. And to my beautiful baby girl, Nova, uh, we dedicated her last week and she is perfect. She's gorgeous and she rarely cries. I thank God because I don't know what he would have, I wouldn't know what I would have done if he would have gave me another child that cried. Um, really, Mondo said it last week, Josh and Steve, they have a, it seems like we have 100 kids. It really does seem like we have 100 kids. Um, but I'm so honored to be up here on Father's Day. I was telling my wife yesterday, I'm so excited to preach on Father's Day because I love being a father. I really do. And if you're here today and your father's next to you, I'm pretty sure this is a very special day for you. But how many I know... Um, in the church, in our world today, we need more fathers. Um, whether it's um, just a father, a biological father, or just spiritual fathers in general to rise up into the call that God is calling them to. We need more fathers. And I've seen the decrease of fathers every single year. I'm going to give you all some statistics in a little bit. And I want this message to really encourage the fathers today um, to walk in the call that God is calling you to today. And we're actually in a series called Renovate, and we're talking about partnering with the Holy Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit really to renovate and construct um, every area of our life. Not just some parts, but every area of our life. And I believe that one area the Holy Spirit wants to renovate and heal is our perspective on how we see God the Father. I want to ask you that today. If you're here and when you think about God the Father, what do you think about? Maybe you think that God is really distant and he's far away. Maybe he's absent. He's not there. Maybe you think that God's some type of God where he just comes to your rescue all the time. And really the only time you talk to him is when you need something. Or maybe you feel like God is mad or disappointed in you today. 
And what I really feel is until we partner with the Holy Spirit, this perspective will not be healed. This perspective will not change. I, I want to say this. You will see God the Father the way you see your earthly father. This can be a good thing or this can be a bad thing. For, for so many here today, this is a special day and, and, and your father has kind of paved the way and showed you really the character of God the Father. He's loved you, he's affirmed you, he's empowered you and on this day, you're so excited. That's for me today. My dad, he empowered me and, and I'm able to empower my children and so this is a special day for me but my heart goes out to those today that haven't been empowered by their father, that haven't been affirmed and loved and cared for by their father. We need this from our fathers. I'm going to give you some statistics really quick um, that, that is mind-blowing. And um, I, I want you to see this so we can open our eyes. 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. 90% of all runaway children are from fatherless homes. 85% of all children with behavioral disorders are from fatherless homes. 71% of high school dropouts are from fatherless homes. 75% of all adolescent chemical abuse patients in drug treatment centers are from fatherless homes. And 85% of all youth in prison are from fatherless homes. L listen to this next st statistic. If a father doesn't go to church, even if the mother goes, only one child out of 50 will go to church as an adult. Isn't that crazy? Say, say you're a mom today and you're coming to church and, and the, the son has a father and he's not going to church. Only one out of 50 children will go to church as an adult. But listen to this. When the father regularly attends church, even when the mother doesn't, 66% of children will attend church. Isn't that crazy? So fathers... You have a responsibility today. You can make an impact on your children's life. And what I've learned as a father, what I've needed in my life, what I've seen my children need, and what you need is the blessing of a father. Every single one of us was created with something inside of us to need the blessing and the affirmation and the approval of the father. This is why you see children saying, Dad, look at me. Look at what I'm doing. Anybody in here have kids that you remember when they're like, Dad, look at what I'm doing. My kids, they will come to me with like a, a picture of Scribble Scrabble. And they're like, Dad, look at my Spider-Man picture. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that is a wonderful. What they want is the blessing of the Father. And uh, the other day, my wife, um, she is amazing. She planned um, a day trip to Legoland. Anybody ever been to Legoland before? It's expensive. Don't go. Very expensive. Um, and she was like, boys, do y'all want to go to Legoland? And the boys were like, yeah, let's go to Legoland. They were all excited. And she was like, babe, why don't you look excited? I'm like, oh, I'd rather spend my $130 somewhere else. But yeah, I'm excited too. And um, I was excited for them. And so uh, it, we were going the, the next day as she was planning. Uh, in the morning, I had to work. So she got everybody ready. She, she bathed them. She clothed them, she fed them, she packed their diaper bags, she filled it with snacks. She was looking up for the tickets online, and, and she was just stressing out. She was doing so much, and on top of it, we got the little guy Cash. He's going everywhere. She has the newborn, and um, I get home from work, and as soon as I open the door, all I hear is, Daddy! And all the kids come running to me, Zion running and Beckham and Cash, and they're jumping on me. And they're like, Dad, look at what I'm doing. Zion's like, Dad, look at the layup I made that you showed me. Beckham's like, Dad, look at my picture. Cash, you with this pass. He's like, look, yuck, yuck. And he's coming. And what they want is they just want the blessing of the Father so bad. And I see my wife in the corner, and she has her arms crossed. She's kind of mad. I'm like, babe, what's wrong? And she's like, I have been doing for them all day long. I am stressed. I planned this whole thing. And you come, and now they say, the fun is going to start now. <laughs> like, what happened to me? Like, why won't they show? I'm like, girl, I can't help if my kids love me more than you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but children just need the blessing of the Father. I see it all the time. My, my son Zion, in school, I see when I show up, at his field day, I've seen, I've showed up a couple of minutes late, and, and he's there looking, 
And then the moment I show up, he's like, Dad, he works harder when I'm there. He wants my approval when I'm there. He tells me, Dad, are you going to be proud of me when he's doing something? Beckham, I see it too. The other day we were at the pool. Zion was jumping in the water and the deep. Beckham wasn't going to do it because he doesn't know how to swim. So he looks and he goes where it's like ankle deep. And he's like, Dad, look at me. Three years old. Three years old. He doesn't know. He, he's three years old. He's like, Dad, look at me. And he, he jumps and barely splashes. He's like, did you see that? And I'm like, oh, my. I, I, I praised him like if he jumped off a 100-foot diving board. And then he does it again and again like if I didn't see it. But he continues to want my approval. Cash, I see it. One years old coming and saying, Dad, look. Every person in here wants the approval and the blessing and the affirmation of the Father. And if you had a father here today that did that for you, what he did is he created a bridge for you to have. It's like he created a stone for you to step on. So that way in life, when life comes, it's a lot easier for you. But what about the people that are fatherless, that didn't have this approval or blessing, or the people that just wanted their father to come and say, hey, are you doing okay? Hey, I know you had that breakup in your life. I just want to check on you today to see if you're doing okay. Hey, I know me and your mom have been going through some stuff. I just want to let you know that we love you. It's not about you. Are you okay? Every person needs this blessing, even Jesus, the creator of the universe. I'll show you here. In Matthew 3.16, it says, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, whom I love with him. I am well pleased. Isn't that awesome? That Jesus even needed this blessing from his father. The father was saying, look, this is my son and I'm so proud of him. But what I want you all to see, church, is this was before Jesus ever did a miracle. This is before he raised the dead, healed the sick, opened blind eyes, helped the lame to walk. Before he raised Lazarus, before he turned water into wine. This is before he died on the cross. This is before Jesus did anything that we praise him for today. God said, I'm so proud of you. And for many of us, we need this. And, and, and even Jesus, 189 times in Scripture and the New Testament, he describes God as being a father. He describes him also as being a judge, provider, healer. But the most he describes him is father. So if Father wants us to see him primarily, if God the Father wants us to see him primarily as Father, don't you think the devil's going to do everything he can to destroy fatherhood? If the way we see God the Father is the way we see our earthly fathers, don't you think the devil is going to do everything he can to destroy the family? He's going to do everything. He wants divorce in the family because he knows the moment the father leaves, the kids are left wondering, was it my fault? Was I not good enough for my dad to fight for me? And I believe that God wants to do this for you today. He wants to be your father. But what I want to do really quick, we're going to go into a story in the Bible. But what I want us to do is really quick, I'm going to give you five different types of fathers. And I don't want to do this to cause you pain or bring up past hurts. But we can't, uh, we can't heal unless we identify what's hurting inside of us. And so I want you to see, and maybe this is one of your fathers, and I believe God is going to bring some healing today. Number one is the absent father. This is where the father wasn't there in the home. Maybe he passed when you were younger. Or maybe there was a divorce in your family where your father left and he had to give you the talk and say, hey, I, I, I'm going to go and work on myself and, and me and your mom are not getting along, so I, I'm going to be leaving. Or maybe your father worked so much that he was never there. And you wanted him to be there so badly. I, I saw a video the other day. They were interviewing this little boy. And they said, when your father's gone, what, what do you do? How do you entertain? And he's like, I pretend that my father's here with me playing basketball. And it broke my heart because he was saying, I, I, I just want my dad to be here present. The second type of father is the abusive father. And this is the type of father where he didn't love you or help you. He hurt you. 
Maybe it was physically, verbally telling you you're never going to amount to anything. Maybe he abused mom, your brothers and sisters, and it hurt you so bad. And many times when, when our father's like this, we look at God and we think he's abusive. We think he's this big guy in the sky just waiting for us to mess up, and he just steps on us and game over. The third is the performance-based father. This is where the father is in the home, and he's going to show you some love. He's going to show you some affirmation, but you're going to have to earn it. You're going to have to do something good to earn that. You're going to have to jump through hoops. You're going to have to do good at the basketball game and sports. You're going to have to get good grades. You're going to have to be perfect in order for the father to come and say, hey, I'm so proud of you. But the moment you mess up, he's not there to tell you that. He's disappointed in you. And this is where we see believers serving God based out of performance. They go a week, they're doing good, and they're like, God's happy with me. And then the moment they mess up, they're like, God's not here for me anymore. The performance-based father. The fourth is the passive father. And this is the father that's there, but he's not really taking any initiative or leadership in your life. Kind of lets you do what you want, hang out with who you want, get in relationships with who you want, out of fear of you disapproving or being disappointed in him. And really, the passive father is passive because he maybe had a dominant father in his life. And he said, I'm never going to be dominant like my father. I'm going to let my kids do whatever they wanted to do. Uh, king David in the Bible, one of the greatest kings to walk this earth was a passive father. The Bible says his children, they would do wicked things and he never disciplined them. And the last, number five, is the type of father that I want to be. And I pray that each and every one of you fathers would become is the empowering father. This is God our father. He is the ultimate, perfect, empowering father. What the empowering father looks like, he prays with his kids. He reads the word with his kids. He teaches his kids. I picture the empowering father going into his son's room at night and saying, what's up, son? Can, I, can we have a little chat? And son's there. He's like, yeah, dad, what's going on? He's like, I just want to tell you that I'm so proud of you. And I love you so much. And anything you want to do in life, I believe that you can do it. You are so amazing. You're so smart. You're so anointed. You're so secure. And I just love you. And the son looks at the dad. He's like, Dad, why? What did I do? And he said, you didn't do nothing. You're my son. And I'm just proud of you. And I just wanted to let you know that today. And he says, and don't tell your sister, but you're my favorite. <laughs> and then he goes over to sister's room. And he's like, hi, sweetheart. How are you doing? I just wanted to talk to you really quick. And, and, and his daughter's like, yes, daddy. Yes, daddy. Right? Daughters. And, 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 she's, and he's like, I just wanted to tell you that you're so valuable to me. You hold so much value. And I believe that one day God's going to bring you the perfect husband because you're so valuable. Don't settle for anything less because you're so amazing. You're so anointed, and I love you so much, and I'm so proud of you. She's like, Daddy, why are you saying this? He's like, because you're my daughter, and you're my child, and I love you. And don't tell your brother, but you're my favorite. <laughs> right? This is the empowering father. And the children not only feel this, but the family feels the impact of the empowering father. And for many of us, we had this. But for many of us, we crave this. We wanted this so bad. We wanted our father just to come into our room and tell us he loved us and he was proud of us, even in our worst moments. But we didn't get that. And when we don't get that, what happens is there's a gap between this relationship with us and God the Father. And I believe Holy Spirit wants to heal you today from that. He wants to reveal the Father to you to tell you he loves you today. And I want to look in a story and this is a very familiar story in the Bible. Um, but many times when we preach about this story or you hear about this story, we look at the son's perspective of this story. But I want to look at the father's perspective of the way he feels about the son. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Luke 15, verse 11. Luke 15, verse 11. You can say amen when you get there. I'll give you all some time to turn. Luke 15, verse 11, we have it up here. It says, to illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. 
A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, his son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding, the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants had, an, had food enough to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet, and kill the fat calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he's found. So the party began. Isn't this an amazing story? And I want to give you four characteristics of what God the Father is like. And I believe if we even grasp these characteristics and pertain them to our lives and apply them to our lives, it will help us to be better fathers as well. Number one is the Father is faithful. The Father is faithful. And I didn't give the title of my message, but the title of my message is God is not your father. That might sound weird, right, to some of you, like, what? I thought God was my father. God is not your father. What I mean is he's your heavenly father, but he's not like your earthly father. And so we thank God for this, that we can see these characteristics, and we see that the father is faithful. Aren't y'all so glad that God the Father is faithful when we're not faithful? In 2 Timothy 2.13, it says, If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. Who is he? He is our Father. And I picture this Father because I'll give you the, the context of this story. There's this son, and he gets a little bit rebellious, and he goes to his father, and he says, Father, I want my money. I want your money right now, your share of estate. I want my inheritance money. And the thing about this, how sad this story is, is normally back then when the son would receive the inheritance money, the father had to be dead. So what this son was doing was he was going to his father. He said, Father, I could care less if you were alive or not. I just want my money. So give me my money. So the son goes, the Bible says he goes into a distant land and he wastes his money on wild living. He spends it all. Then when he's broke and he doesn't have no more, he's like, oh my gosh, what do I do? He goes and he asks this farmer, can you hire me? I need work. I need money. I ran out of money. So, so this farmer hires him and he, he sends him to go out and work with the pigs. And you can see how disgusting this might be for this man to look at the pig's food and say, mm, that looks good. That, that's disgusting. He looks at the, at, the, at the food of the pigs and he's like, this looks good. And finally the Bible says he comes to his senses and he says, you know what? It was better in my father's home. I'm going to go back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this speech for my father. But I think about the father that the Bible says he sees the son from a distance. And the only way really to see something from a distance or far away is you're, if you're looking for something or waiting for something, right? Anybody in here walk and you're looking like this? No, everybody walks and they look at what's right in front of them. But the Bible says the father saw him from a distance. So I could only imagine the father day after day going out into the fields, looking for his son, waiting for his son. Even though the son was so unfaithful to the father, the father never turned his heart on the son. And day after day, he would go out and he would look and 
Maybe you're here today and your father promised you when you were just a child, I'm always going to be here for you, son. I'm always going to be here for you, daughter. I'm never going to leave you. I, I cherish you. I love you. And then he wasn't. I'm so thankful that God the Father is faithful to his promises. And day after day, he waited for his son. Any parents in here, like your, fa- your, your kids ever leave and you cannot go to sleep until they get home? Anybody, any parents? My mom. That's my mom. My mom will be up till like 5 in the morning waiting for us to get home, calling us, where are you at? And uh, my son Zion, he's been liking to spend a night uh, at other places. And, uh, and he loves spending the night in Stephen Trell's house. Um, they're his godparents. And, um, but he also loves being with us at night. Like he has all the fun in the world. And then nighttime comes and he's like, I miss my mom and dad. And uh, we love him being home. And the other night, he went to go spend the night with them. And me and my wife were up till like 2 in the morning, like, oh, I miss him so much. And I just wish he would call us. Like, I just like, I wonder what he's doing. I'm like, babe, he's asleep. And, 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 uh, and, and so I get a phone call. We're watching a movie. I get a phone call, and it says, little man, it's, my, it's, it's Zion. And I'm like, he's calling me. Kayla's like, answer the phone, answer the phone. And I'm like, chill, girl. And I'm like, hello? And he's like, dad? I'm like, Yes. He's like, I just want to come home. And I'm like, you want to come home? And I'm like, why? What's going on? I, I told you, you, sh- you should are you sure you don't want to stay there? Which I really want him to come home. Are you sure? He's like, no, I miss you guys and I can't sleep and I just want to be home with y'all. And I'm already out there waiting outside. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but okay, I'm like, okay, I am coming. I'm like, go wake up Uncle Steve. And he goes and he comes back to his iPad. He's like, dad, Uncle Steve's asleep. What do I do? And I'm just shake him, just shake Uncle Steve, because I'm not going to ring the doorbell, and Steve shoots me. And so, <laughs> and, and I'm like, just wake up Uncle Steve. And then he's like, Dad, I, I woke up Uncle Steve. I'm like, did he get scared? He's like, no, he's just, he's up now. And so I'm like, I'm on my way. And he gets in the car, and there's no better feeling than just to have my son back with me. Even though I like him spending the night having fun, it's his summer, there's no greater feeling than to have my son with me. Do you know that this is what the Father thinks about you? That when you go and you do your own thing, he just wants you to come home. He just wants you to be in his presence. He wants you to be there. And I love how the Bible says that the Father daily, he's waiting and he's looking. And then he sees his son from a distance. And you can only imagine the son filled with pig food and dirt and his clothes ripped apart, feeling so shameful and regretful. And the Bible doesn't say that the father stands there with his arms crossed waiting for the son saying, I told you. I wonder how many fathers here said that to their children. And you experienced your father to love you at a time that maybe you opened up to him and he bashed you for it. Or he was disappointed in you. But the Bible says this father takes off running. And if just for one moment, church, I want you to put yourself in that son's shoes. And I want you to picture the Father running after you, wherever you're at in life right now. No matter how low you've been, no matter how many mistakes you've been, the Father was faithful to the Son. He ran and he embraced him. And another word we could say for faithful, he was full of faith that his Son came home. And I pray today, my hope and my prayer is that fathers in here would be full of faith for their children to come home. That they will be full of faith to impart into their children's life, to speak into their children's life. And some of you might ask this question, Josh, I want to be a father filled with faith and faithful with my children, but I don't know how to do it. What do I do? I want to show you really quick. This is such an awesome scripture. In Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your hearts and with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your heart. So God is really telling the parents this today. And he says, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. In the future, When your son asks you, we'll go down to verse 20. It says, in the future, when your son asks you, what is the meaning of these stipulations, decrees, and laws the Lord our God has commanded you? Tell him, 
We were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with the mighty hand. The first thing we can do for our children uh, and walk in faith is we have to lead by example. Your children, will, your children will either bear the burden of your decisions or they will inherit the blessing of your decisions. I, I want my children, my children are, are going to go through enough in life. I don't want them already to have to bear the burden of all the decisions I make. I want them to inherit the blessings of the decisions I make financially, spiritually. We first have to, the Bible is telling the parents, you have to love the Lord your God with everything first. See, childhood is more caught rather than taught. Your children are going to do more what you do rather than what you say. So you can tell your children all you want. Hey, love God. Go to church. Read your Bible. Get into the presence of God. But until they see you doing it first, they're not going to do it. They won't. They want to see their dad doing it first. And this is why I love, with my son, I love reading the Bible with him. I like praying with my children at night before they go to bed. And I'll show them. And you can see it. If you get around Zion for long enough, and we're there in the day, and he's like, oh, shoot. I'm like, what? He's like, I haven't fed my spirit today, and he'll go and run and read his Bible. And, and it blesses my heart to see that, but this is what we impart to him. And, and, and even the, 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 the Bible says to tell them what you've gone through. That, that, that's what it says right here in Deuteronomy. In the future, when your son asks, tell him we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt. The second thing we need to do is we need to teach them the word of God. As a father, have you taught your son and your daughters the word of God? Teach them, show them, sit down with them. Number three, we have to share our testimony with them. That's what it's saying. When your son asks you, what does this mean? It says to tell them, look what God did in my life. There's nothing more I love than to sit down with my kids and tell them about my testimony, even after correcting them. And, and sometimes we'll go into the room for some fellowship, if you know what I mean. And um, I'll, we'll, we'll do some coaching and correction. But afterwards, I like to talk to them and tell them why. And I'll ask them and I'll say, hey, why did daddy correct you today? And they're like, because you love me. And I tell them, look what the Bible says. The Bible says, if you love your children, you'll discipline them. And I tell them, I want you to be the best Zion and the Beckham and the cash that you can be. And when you acted like this, I don't want you to act this way. So the Bible says, I have to take that out of you. And I want you to be the best. And this is what empowering your children does. But then I also tell them, let me tell you about daddy. Daddy used to do the same thing. And I remember my dad correcting me. And he would tell me, one day you're going to thank me for this. Anybody, any parents ever said this to your children? And they're like, no, I hate it. And then you grow up and you're doing the same thing. You tell your children, one day you're going to thank me for this. Because fatherhood is a long-term game. It's not a short-term game. And, and we have to impart now for the long term. And I will tell them about my testimony and say, hey, I used to be this way. And, and through correction and through God delivering me and setting me free, this is what really changed dad. And the fourth thing is we have to pray with them daily. This scripture is really giving us the antidote of what it means to raise godly children. Amen? Number two is the Father gives freedom. Your Father in heaven gives you freedom. We can see in this story with this young man, he mutters up this speech and he says, I'm going to go back home and I'm going to say, Father, I've sinned against both you and heaven. I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. Please hire me on as a servant. And I wonder how many of us today are working to earn God's love. You mess up, you make a mistake, and then you feel like you have to earn God's love and his blessing. But I love what happens in this story. When the son comes back to the father, it says this, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. But I want you to notice the father doesn't let him get to the part where he asks him to hire as a servant. Because when you are a child of God, there is nothing that you can do to change this position in the eyes of the father. There's nothing, no mistake you can do. Galatians 4.4 4 says this, 
But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we're his children, God has sent his spirit, has has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. Isn't that awesome? And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. I love this because the Bible is saying that when we come to the Father, There's this great experience that happens that when we were born, we were born sinners. We were born slaves to sin. But the Bible says that when we come to the Father, when we get saved and experience salvation, he not only saves our soul for eternity, but his spirit comes into our spirit. And that spirit cries out, I now have a father. Isn't that good? So so for, for those of you here today that are fatherless, the Bible says that God is a father to the fatherless. And that spirit, his spirit links up with you and it's crying out, God, you're my father. You're my daddy, God. Abba means dad. It means a, a closeness. You are my father. And there's so many people, they think that salvation is just about getting saved. And they serve God out of fear, saying, I'm going to serve God because I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. But there's a whole different part of salvation, and that's God becoming your father. This is the freedom that we experience. Amen? Number three, my last point, the father is forgiving. The father is forgiving. We see in the story of the son As he runs to his dad, his dad embraces him. He forgives him. I want you all to see the dad never reminds him what he did. Never. Never he says, I can't believe you did that, son. I can't believe you wasted all my money. No, he embraces him and he clothes him. In 1 John 1, 9, it says, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. I believe that one thing God wants to cleanse us from is the pain that we've experienced, maybe from a relationship with our earthly fathers, if you've gone through some stuff today. I believe there's three parts to forgiveness. Number one is experiencing God's forgiveness for you. Allowing God to forgive you. Many of you, you pray and you say, God, I'm sorry, but you prayed that same prayer yesterday and God's like, I don't even remember what you did. I forgot about what you did. And we're here asking God to forgive us for something he already forgave us for. And the reason is because maybe your dad brought up what you did over and over and over and disciplined you over for the same thing that you already said sorry for. It's time as a church and fathers that we experience this grace in our life. Number two, we have to pray for God to give us the strength to forgive our fathers. If you had a father in here, you might be like, Josh, there is no way I'm forgiving my dad. You don't know what he did to me. You don't know what he said to me. You don't know how he walked out on me. You don't know the pain I felt and carried all these years, even through divorce. Maybe your father sat down with you and he said, son and daughter, I'm leaving, but what I want you to know, this is not about you. It's not. It's about me and mom. But what did you do? You blamed yourself. And maybe you felt, my dad didn't love me enough to fight for his marriage. He didn't love me enough to stay. And, and, and one thing we have to do is we have to find the strength and ask God to give us the strength to forgive our fathers. And one thing I've learned as a father Um, my dad, he was such an amazing father and we have such a great relationship, but he's not perfect. Me as a father, I am not perfect. And one thing I've learned to forgive people is see where they come from. And my dad, me and my dad, we've had talks over the years and, and we have had these moments where he's apologized to me and I hugged him and I said, it's okay, dad. And, but one thing I've learned about my dad is his father, the way he treated him. 
and, and how he wasn't good to him. And my dad had to tell me I needed healing from him, son. And, and maybe you're here today and you've blamed your father, but I want to ask you to see where he came from. Maybe he didn't have the type of father that loved him. Maybe he didn't have the father to be there for him. And he tried his best for you. And maybe you could just find enough strength to say, okay, I'm ready to forgive him. And the third way of forgiveness is, as fathers, we have to learn to forgive ourselves. We make a lot of mistakes as fathers. I can raise my hand. I have made some of the biggest mistakes that until this day, my children, they come to me and they tell me, Dad, do you remember that last time you got mad at me? And it, I'm like, oh. And, 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 and there's guilt that tries to come in. There's shame. But I'm so thankful for God because he could redeem anything. Amen. The way I tell you that I talk to my children now and I, I never discipline without talking, I used to discipline and walk away. I, I made these mistakes in, in my children's life. But one place I had to come is allow the Holy Spirit to come and just allow me to forgive myself. Maybe today you need to forgive yourself, fathers, for some of the mistakes that you've made in your life. But I believe sometimes we become hard. I've talked to many men, and I'm like, what's your relationship with your father like? I'm like, oh, they're not in my life, but it doesn't, it doesn't hurt me. I don't really care about it. Uh, it doesn't bother me anymore. He's who he is. He, he's, he's horrible, but it really does hurt them inside. They're just numbing that pain. And um, I was thinking about this the other day. When I was younger, I, um, I had this little bump on my leg, and um, it hurt so bad. And I told my mom and dad about it, and my mom was like, oh, you just want to miss school. And, uh, <laughs> and I was always trying to miss school, so like, it was like the boy who cried wolf. She's like, there's nothing wrong with your leg, Josh. It's just a little ant bite. And I'm like, no, it, it really hurts, Mom. It hurts so bad, I can't walk. And she's like, you're being dramatic, Josh. And here I was, like, walking. And that little bump bursted. And, uh, and I still have the scar from it from this day. And I was like, Mom, I, I, I really need, I think I might need to go to the hospital. I can't walk. She was like, put a Band-Aid on it. It's just a little bump. And I was like, okay. So I put the Band-Aid on it. And, uh, and um, I, it still hurts so bad. And my dad was like, okay, you know what? I think we need to take Josh to the hospital. They took me to the hospital, and um, my dad stayed with me the whole night. And I, re I was remembering this, this moment as my dad slept like in a little cot, and it blessed me. Um, but I remember the doctors coming, and they say, uh, sir, if y'all didn't get to this bump, it, it, it turned out to be like a staph infection, and it made a hole in my leg. Um, and it was like spreading through my leg. They said, if y'all didn't get to this infection in time, it would have spread to your, your son's leg. And we might have had to like cut off his leg. And, um, and, and my dad was so thankful. I was so thankful they got to it in time. But God showed me that this is how many people deal with the wounds of their father inside. They just put a Band-Aid on it. They don't, they don't heal. They don't want to feel the pain. But God cannot heal what you refuse to deal with. He won't heal it unless you recognize it and say, God, you know what? This does hurt from what I've gone through with my father. But God is a good father, and he wants to be here for you today. And I want us to bow our heads and close our eyes right there where you're at. And if you're here and you've never accepted Jesus before, And you want him to be the Lord of your life. And you need healing in your life and you've never accepted Jesus before. I want you to lift your hand right there where you're at. Amen. 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 And if you're here today and you've experienced pain from your father in the past, if something just stuck out to you, maybe he was absent, abusive, performance-based, whatever it is, and you know that you need healing today, I want you to lift your hand right there where you're at. No looking around. Amen. I see your hands. Right now, if you think about your father right there, just keep your hands lifted and let, let God the Father come and just touch you right now. If you've experienced pain from the past, right there where you're at, 
maybe you see that you've had a wrong perspective about God the Father, that He didn't love you or He was disappointed in you or He rejected you. Right there, I want you to lift your hands today. Amen. I just want you to let him love you right there where you're at. Just let God the Father love you right there. Maybe there was divorce in your family. Your father walked out. Maybe he never empowered you or told you he was proud of you. But today God is saying, I'm your father. And I will supplement everything that you've lacked in your life. I will empower you. I'm proud of you, daughter. I love you. I've never left you. I've never forsaken you. I've always been here. And there's people getting touched right now. Maybe you're in here today and you need to forgive your dad for the past. I want you right there just to say, Holy Spirit, Give me the strength to forgive my dad. Give me the strength to see where he comes from. Help me to show him grace the way you've showed me grace, Holy Spirit. And can we stand to our feet today and just remain in this type of spirit and reverence for God the Father? Come on, can we just lift our hands right there where you're at? 